Thank you for introduction. Um, I'm Kohei Fujisa from University of Tokyo. I'll talk about this topic. Um, this is uh, uh, work we have presented in SC18 and um, Gordon Bell Prize finalist. And this work uh, is a joint work with these members uh, from University of Tokyo, Riken, NVIDIA, Oak Ridge, and CSCS. So um, our topic is our earthquake simulation today. And um, uh, what we're thinking of doing is uh, uh, designing con uh, smart cities, which is controlling cities based on real-time data for higher efficiency. And uh, we think, we're thinking that uh, high-performance computing is ex expected as one of the key enabling tools for these um, simulations. Uh, however, uh, when we are thinking of smart cities, disaster resiliency is a requirement, but it's not established yet. So for example, this is a Tokyo station district. It not just only has um, skyscrapers and railroad facilities, but um, also has underground subways or uh, shopping malls. And we need to simulate this whole domain for uh, doing this kind of um, smart city design. And um, so um, we have, when we're con considering uh, urban earthquake simulations, we need to use um, implicit solvers with um, unstructured mesh. And these simulations are very, very costly. So we have been developing high performance implicit uh, unstructured fill-in element solvers. And um, so we have been doing in the past, SC14, 15, and 16. And, but these ones were only for the ground simulation only. And however, when we are targeting these um, structures with uh, underground and overground structures, we need to have uh, very more uh, elements, very costly. And um, the traditional physics-based modeling becomes too costly. So what we're trying to do is to combine use of data analytics with uh, these equation-based modeling to uh, solve these kind of problems. So uh, as you all know, uh, when we're targeting a phenomena to solve, we can uh, use equation-based modeling, which is very uh, precise, but uh, also very costly. And on the other side, there's data analytics, which is very fast in inferencing. However, its accuracy is not as high when we are solving these kind of physics problems that have stiff um, governing equations. And uh, we're trying to combine these methods to complement each other. So um, what we have been doing in the past is, as a first step, is to use high performance computing equation-based modeling to generate high quality data and use that for um, uh, training uh, AI such that we can get better uh, AI with better prediction. So, um, so uh, we have developed this type of thing for earthquake intensity prediction method in SA17 and we received best poster for that. And so in SC18, uh, we extend this concept and and we train AI to accelerate equation-based modeling. And so uh, I will talk about this today. Uh, we, by using data analytics uh, with uh, equation-based modeling, we uh, succeed to accelerate equation-based modeling solvers. Um, and by using this AI and solver, we enable to uh, simulate this fully coupled ground structure simulation on Summit. So this is the Tokyo Station District with the skyscrapers and Tokyo Station. And this all has also the underground shopping malls and the subway stations. And the, each of these subway stations are uh, two or three stories high in underground. Also, we have these underground soil layers. And uh, we can simulate this whole domain uh, with um, the shaking for, uh, of earthquakes. So um, how do we do this? Uh, so uh, we are solving a um, linear set of equations. These uh, equations are very, very large. This x, uh, the unknown ve vector is uh, degrees of billions of or two trillions of degree of freedom order. And um, when we're, uh, the difficulty of using data, data analytics in this solver is that data analytics results are not always accurate. However, we need accurate things to solve these stuff. 
And um, so we need to design a solver algorithm that enables robust and cost-effective use of data analytics uh, together uh, with uniformity for scalability on large-scale systems. So there are many candidates of doing this. And uh, one candidate is guessing the, um, the inverse of A for use in the preconditioner. So for example, we can use data analytics to um, determine the fill-in pattern of, of matrix for ILU or such uh, kind of approximate uh, preconditioning methods. However, um, this becomes quite challenging um, uh, for unstructured mesh with the sparseness of the matrix is non-uniform, uh, which leads to uh, difficulty in load balancing also for robustness. So uh, what we're trying to think is to uh, uh, design an algorithm uh, that uh, we use not just the um, sparsity uh, information of A, but also to use the um, the physical governing equation that the discretized A is coming from. So um, in the previous slide, I was just talking about uh, this discretized form a matrix equation. Uh, but this equation is coming from discretized form of the governing equation, which models the uh, phenomena. And depending on the phenomena of the, or, or the governing equation, and also the physical properties of the problem, uh, such as the domain uh, material properties or the shape, um, this uh, A, the form of A changes. And uh, when we, if we think of uh, this, um, the characteristics of A uh, with the governing equation characteristics and the discretization uh, um, characteristics, we may be able to improve the convergence of, of the solver. And so what we have done is to, uh, based on the governing equation properties and the discretization properties, we extract parts of the um, whole um, matrix equation uh, that have a bad convergence and, um, and extensively solve this part uh, extracted by the AI. So uh, this is the um, solver algorithm. Um, so we have, um, uh, iterative solver based on the conjugate gradient method. And in the conjugate gradient method, we uh, use another conjugate gradient method to search for the search direction of the uh, preconditioner. So inside here, we don't have to solve the equation um, az equal r um, uh, very in high precision. Uh, but we can uh, solve this roughly. And, and so in here, we can use some methods such that we use AI and that is not as uh, accurate as the equation-based modeling, but still use it for a bet better solution with lower cost. So here, we first solve the whole domain with a coarse mesh, and then we uh, extract the parts of the problem that has um, lower, uh, uh, that is uh, difficult to solve by AI, and then use it uh, into as initial solution for solving the high uh, accuracy solver. And by doing this, uh, we can um, extract the uh, parts of the problem with AI and use those um, uh, results that are not as um, accurate, uh, but we can use it inside a physical um, equation-based solver. So uh, this is showing uh, what, how we are doing this. So we train an artificial neural network to guess the degree of difficulty of convergence for um, solving this whole domain and extract the parts that are harder to uh, solve uh, into a part, uh, extracted part, and solve this part extensively. So this part is about one-tenth of the whole model. We can solve this very fast compared to the whole model and use this as initial solution for solving the uh, larger domain. And so this is the performance of our solver on the K-computer. And um, we can reduce the flop count by 5.5 times from standard, standard solver. And also we can, uh, this is uh, lower uh, in flop count than uh, other methods without using um, the AI methods. And this is showing the um, scalability on the K-computer weak scaling. And the blue line is the standard solver. The red line is our previous solver in SC14. And the uh, green one is our AI enhanced solver. So we can see about 15, more than 15 times uh, faster than the uh, standard solver and 
about 1.5 or more than, or more than uh, about two times faster than the, our previous solver uh, using multi-grid or mixed precision arithmetic. And uh, this also scales well for strong scaling as uh, we have designed the solver to be um, scalable up to the large systems. And we also uh, ported this to um, accelerator um, supercomputers, Pizdain and Summit. And this uh, is showing the um, statistics of the uh, systems. Uh, you can see that the um, communication or the memory bandwidth is relatively lower on the uh, GPU accelerated systems. So in order to get performance, uh, we need to reduce state transfer uh, to uh, get performance. As we are using um, adaptive preconditioning, we can use um, lower precision arithmetics. Uh, at the moment, on the K-computer, we were using only half single precision and double precision, but uh, we, are, we next try to use more lower precision arithmetic. So uh, half precision arithmetics, um, as you all know, um, it, it has uh, half the data size of uh, single precision. And, but using this explicitly inside these simulations is quite difficult um, because of the smaller dynamic range or the smaller fraction bits had these two uh, lower accuracy. So uh, what we try to do is to use FB16 inside these kernels that uh, we can do, uh, we can normalize these computations. So here, when we do uh, matrix, ve matrix vector multiplication, we compute element-wise multiplication. So instead of storing the global matrix and computing the uh, matrix vector product, we compute um, matrix vector products element-wise. So it, when we compute this element-wise, we can normalize these uh, sizes of these uh, loading of these vectors and then uh, store these vectors in FB32, but we can compute the inside uh, heavy computation parts by using half precision. And uh, by doing this, we can use the um, doubled width FB16 cores of the uh, P100 or V100 GPUs, and this uh, we can achieve high peak performance of 71% uh, of uh, FB64 peak performance. And we can also uh, use similar type of normalization ideas to uh, reduce the communication uh, data sizes between MPI partitions uh, by using FB16 communication. And um, also we've um, introduced another um, custom data type, uh, FB21, uh, which is uh, uh, in between the uh, single precision and 16-bit half precision. Um, the exponent uh, part is the same as the single precision, uh, but we have reduced the fraction bits uh, compared to single precision. So um, by using this, we can uh, enlarge the range of the um, uh, floating point numbers compared to half precision, uh, such that we can use it in the uh, most of the parts of the um, conjugate gradient solver. And by using this, we can reduce the data size uh, and to one third of a 64-bit array. And however, we don't have FP21 um, compute cores on these systems. So when we are doing computation, we convert these FP21 um, numbers to FP32 compute and then store it back in FP21. So this uh, is only used for reducing the memory traffic and the uh, memory um, sizes on our memory, which is very limited for the GPUs. So and this is the performance on uh, PISDAIN and Summit. Um, this one is for PISDAIN and this one is Summit. This is weak scaling, so we want to have flat scaling. And we get a very uh, good scaling up to a nearly full system of PISDAIN and a nearly full, uh, full, full system of Summit. And this is number of GPUs. So. This is 4,000 nodes on Summit. And um, uh, this leads to about 20% of uh, FB64 uh, peak performance on Pistain and about 15% on Summit. And as you can see, the performance is, has increased signific significantly from our previous implementation on, uh, and um, 
this is due to both the AI and also these trans precision um, communication or uh, computation um, that we have implemented into our developed solvers. So uh, this is the summary. Um, uh, we need to design new algorithms for accelerating equation-based simulations by data analytics. And we did this by designing a scalable solver that can robustly incorporate data analytics. And also when we are thinking of these recent systems uh, with um, very, very fast um, cores, um, we uh, need to use these kind of trans-precision uh, computation or communication techniques to improve uh, performance enough, uh, uh, improve the, um, uh, uh, reduce the communication or communication uh, um, bottleneck. And um, we also think that these types of um, ideas can be used for other types of equation-based modeling. And we plan to expand this idea on, uh, for application development on the post-K computer. And so this is our acknowledgments, and I will finish my presentation. Thank you very much.